Six months ago, I showed you how to use XPS foam to make this windmill. Now I'm going to show you how to transform that windmill into this observatory. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week marks a very special video for me. It is my six month anniversary here being live on YouTube. It's been an amazing ride. I can't wait to see where it takes me in the future. In just six months, I've got over 13,000 subscribers. Thank you to each and every one of you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so down below. Now, for this video, I'm taking it all the way back to the beginning where I'm going to actually grab the windmill build that I did for my very first video and turn it into this observatory. It's a really neat build. The telescope here moves on you. The top also rotates 360 degrees. It's held on by magnets, obviously, right? And you can grab the plans in the description below. It actually, the plans are a good idea for this build just because it makes it a lot easier um, with some of the little technical parts on the inside um, to have the telescope move. Now, something else cool about the channel, I am now officially a YouTube partner. Um, it's been a little bit of a ride there trying to get that milestone, and I'm very happy to say I'm now a partner. It's actually unlocked my merchandise shelf. So as you can see, I'm wearing my t-shirt here where the logo was designed by Tregis Fantasy Art. If you haven't checked him out yet, head on over to his Instagram page. He's got a lot of really cool art. The robe that the caster is wearing here um, can also be made up in red on the shirt, so you can craft your own t-shirt over there. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, blankets, mugs, all that kind of stuff. Check them out. Alright, so with that, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. We're going to start by cutting out two cylinders, one there for the top dome and one for the rectangular piece just below it. So I'm using a circle jig here. That I made myself. Uh, pretty easy jig to make. Shifting lens has them. Um, but again, pretty easy jig here to make. So you're going to cut this cylinder out. Uh, one for the base here, and then the smaller one for the top of the dome. If you have a dome cutter, if not that top one, you'll probably want to get a uh, styrofoam ball from a craft store. Now all we're doing is cutting this to the correct height. And obviously, uh, for me, I'm going to be using the uh, Dome Cutter by Shifting Lands. And I've done a video on how to um, put this together and use it. I'll put a link above to check that out if you'd like to see that. Now, it's a little bit of trial and error when you first start. As you can see here, I'm making a nice slow cut with the Dome Cutter, but I didn't quite make it all the way to the edge there to make a nice complete dome. So just slowly move the entire jig closer to the wire until when you make your pass on the proxon, as you can see right here, um, I made it right to the edge of the cylinder. Bam, right there. So all you have to do now is pull out the little key, rotate the jig to the next slot, and just start chipping away uh, at all these pieces here. And I didn't do a perfectly smooth uh, dome here because I'm going to use these angle pieces uh, for some more detail later on. But if you wanted to, you could unscrew the styrofoam from the dome cutter and cut all those lines out as well. Now grabbing this section from the plans, uh, just make this cut out right here. Sort of looks like Pac-Man a little bit or the Millennium Falcon. And uh, you're going to go ahead and just trace that out, extend the line all the way across and cut these completely off um, or all the way through. That first cut's a little tough because you don't really have anything to um, use the guide on because it's a, you know the dome, but um, you know just take your time, keep the heat low, uh, make the cuts as you see here. Then back to the plans, uh, we grab these and cut out this odd little shape right here. So all of this is so that the telescope can rotate uh, once the dome is put together. So we have to sort of piecemeal the dome here. 
So we'll cut this piece off. The triangular piece um, on the top of the screen we don't need. Now I'm measuring this height here that I just marked out, cutting that in half. Um, as you'll see here, um, part of this is going to get cut out for the uh, telescope. So obviously I have a couple of sets of plans. I just printed a few off. Uh, it makes things a little bit easier. Okay, so transferring this over to the first section of the cylinder here, we're going to trace that part out, but we're going to come back and retrace even more of it here in a second. On the bottom half of the cylinder, which is this piece, we're going to trace out this square, and this is going to get cut out completely all the way through. Now going back to the first piece we cut out, we're going to cut this section out, put it back on the first cylinder, and then um, we'll be all set for the full cut. You'll see what I mean in a minute. It's a little confusing, but all this will ensure that the telescope will move and rotate properly once it's all put together. So that's the complete cut that's gonna come out on the top half. Now this is the section obviously that just had the square in the middle. We're gonna cut that completely out because when the telescope rotates, um, it would have hit this and it would have been in the way. This section of the stencil is going to allow for the proper location of the magnets onto the dome. So just cut this out and mark the center of each one of these holes. And then you're going to transfer this over to the left side of the dome here. Now you're going to notice if you download these plans that the stencil is a little bit different for those circle locations. It's because I found an error when I was doing this. So I corrected it um, later on where this third circle here I'm about to mark is right on that line. All I did was move it up a little bit to make it easier for you to um, cut it out in the foam. And as you've seen in most of my videos, or a lot of them, I use a lot of magnets. Uh, here, obviously all we're gonna do is just add a couple, add three of them to these locations. And now we are going to move over to the telescope. Um, this is, might vary a little bit depending on the size of um, paper, um, you know, paper towel tubes or whatever you kind of get um, for your observatory telescope. Um, but you know, you can just make these corrections on the fly. Before you start the project, measure your dimensions out. And if they vary a little bit, make those corrections on the styrofoam as well. But just start saving up all these uh, paper towel rolls. I believe I use a lot of the uh, aluminum foil rolls here. They're a little bit smaller um, than the paper towel ones, and they're a little bit more sturdy as well. So once you have this area marked out for a magnet, um, let out some aggression and just start pumping the hot glue right into that hole. And sticking the magnet right in there, make sure it's nice and flush, and then turn it so that the magnet's facing down so the hot glue will drip over it, and that will be in there nice and secure. Then we just take a barbecue skewer, run it through the other hole that's marked out on the plan for the uh, telescope itself. And I cut them to about an inch in length. Okay, and this is what's gonna obviously help the uh, telescope rotate. And you can see why that square is cut out now. All right, now I am just cutting this kind of to length. Um, I show it in the plans, but you know, whatever you, you want your telescope to look like in length, you can do that yourself. Now I needed um, something for the glass on the telescope. And honestly, I didn't have anything until I got to this point in the build. And I was looking around and I saw some of these little um, bottle droppers for mixing some of my airbrush paint. And I was like, that's absolutely perfect. So that's what I went with. Um, depending on the size of the paper towel tube rolls that you're using, um, you know, you can roll up a ball of aluminum foil for this step. Um, you know, whatever you can find that would fit nicely. I just kind of got lucky here with this. Uh, and it doesn't really matter because I'll show you here in a minute why, you know, what you're going to use there. Now I'm just wrapping a thin piece of XPS around that for some decoration. And the reason that uh, it doesn't matter what you use is because we're going to coat this in some green stuff. We'll make a nice smooth surface, just wet your finger. Uh, rub the green stuff and um, you'll be all set and good to go. Now 
Now, I was a little nervous when I started this because um, it started going in and then kind of got stuck and I couldn't push it in and I started messing up uh, the XPS foam on the paper towel roll, but I got it in there. You want to leave this recessed a little bit. Uh, I think it looks a little bit more realistic that way than pushing it all the way out. Here you can see the paper towel roll um, on the smaller one was a little too small, so no problem. All I did was just take a thin strip of XPS, wrapped it and glued it around there, and it fit nice and snug. It's kind of the nice thing about, you know, crafting like this is, you know, you come across an issue and you just adjust it and fix it on the fly. And this was the final piece here going in, so I set that up with some hot glue. Now I'm just marking well beyond um, that part of the stencil so I know where to bring my designs here for the metal work. That way it doesn't show uh, later on. So just using a pen, I'm just drawing in some plates. And I'm gonna add some, obviously add some rivet holes. All right, so back to the same stencil, cutting it out again. And all I'm gonna do is cut a little notch out here just to help me line this piece of the stencil up with what we've been working on. And this is gonna help us get our alignment correct um, for the um, rods here that are gonna help the telescope rotate. So all you wanna do is give a nice indent on that dotted line right there to give you dead center. And then using either this hot wire knife or um, you know, an exacto to cut it out. That's all you need. Now these are the two halves of the dome. Um, I just found center on those as well, marking out the same length of that barbecue skewer. And I'm gonna go ahead again and burn out um, a little channel here. We're gonna take that uh, yellow straw in the background and use that to help uh, make the telescope rotate. So we just have to basically burn out half that diameter. Now tacking on a little bit more detail, I just took a thinner piece of XPS and wrapped it around the outer one. And now just a little tiny dab of super glue. You don't want a lot because this stuff does eat through the foam. And then um, this pack of rhinestones is amazing. I think there's like five or six different sizes and you'll never have to buy these again. Uh, links to all the items, including these rhinestones, are in the description below um, where you can pick them up on Amazon. All right, finally we get to hot glue something. Basically, um, just sandwich these two together. And the whole reason basically we just cut this out was to um, allow us to cut that square out there in the bottom. Then we'll go ahead and just add four magnets to each side, making sure if you can see top left, I've already got the magnets on my previous build from the windmill, making sure that those are all um, with the same polarity because we want to be able to rotate this whole top. You know, if, uh, if you didn't do that early on, if you built the windmill already, no big deal, just cut them out and re-glue it back in and repaint it. Now to hide the seam between um, these two round sections we just glued together, I just wrapped again a thin piece of XPS around it, glued it in place. This little section is in the way, so all I do is just cut it out. So we'll set that aside, grab this piece for the cog, cut it out, and we'll get working on this here. Now I've got the heat really low. I'm just gonna cut this out on the Proxon. Obviously you can use an Ulfa knife for this. Uh, what I do is I just like to have it so that the wire is just barely going through. It gives me really good control. And once the cog's cut out, cut this inner circle out. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, burn this whole center out here in a second. So I did one um, strip around the outside, you can sort of see that. Now I'm burning out the whole center. It's because we're gonna go ahead and take some metallic cogs 
and place them on the inside of this to make it have a whole bunch of gears like it's moving. So this took a, a you know a few minutes to burn all that out, um, but you know has a good look to it. I'm grabbing this tool that you see me using a lot of my videos. I'll put a link above to the video on um, me talking about how I make it. Um, it works absolutely amazing to scrape off all that excess XPS. Now, if you don't have a hot wire knife, you can go with, ahead with this method and just score it out with an X-Acto and then using these clay sculpting tools, just peel the stuff right out. It comes out real easy. All right, now we're just going back and all we're trying to do here is mark dead center of the cog. All right, now that we've got center, hold it in place on the base that we have of the windmill build and push it right into it. And that's gonna show us right where we need to put our magnet to hold this cog on. So just glue it in place and uh, paint it up and you're all set. Now this magnet, we're not gonna cut into the foam, we're gonna place right on the surface. Um, because of the little gap uh, that's there between the cog and the old build. And um, I accidentally uh, spilled some canned air upside down onto this to cool the uh, hot glue quickly, but it was an accident. I don't recommend doing it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So anyway, let's move on. Next, we are going to take a little dowel and just glue it, hot glue it right to the center of the cog. Now, rhinestones, breaking these back out. And in order to place these um, symmetrically around the build, uh, just after you put one on, turn the thing around 180 degrees and that's the next one that you do. So I did north, south, east, west, and then I did all the um, uh, rhinestones in between those as well. As you can see, I added some rhinestones to the piece up top, do not do that. I ended up ripping all those off. Uh, you'll see what I did here in a minute on that, but just adding a little hot glue to add some more detail uh, for some metal bracing around this. Some pretty small strips of XPS foam, but I didn't feel like waiting for tacky glue to dry. This worked just fine though. All right, now while that's all setting up, going back and just continue our plate work down on the inside here. And I ended up, I was going to make this piece metal, but I decided to make it stone, which is why I took those rhinestones off. So I had some stone texture to that. And then this is like a quarter inch by quarter inch log I made. I'm just adding some wood texture to it. And we're going to hot glue these and stick these right onto some toothpicks that we have inserted into that base just to help hold them on. And this is going to look like a big piece of stone had notches carved out of it and was placed on top of like a wooden wheel that's gonna help rotate and turn this thing. All right, so this is a uh, bronze color that I'm using to base coat the telescope. And then I went with a copper to um, add a little variation here for all of the uh, bracing or the buckling. And then I used a gunmetal color for the metal plating. You can see I used the copper for that little strip around that. And now I'm going back to the bronze for the main portion of the dome. And here I'm using a Vallejo paint. This is also, I believe this is a bronze color. And I'm just painting some triangles uh, around this entire section here like this. It's just very subtle, but it added a really cool touch to the telescope. grab some wash. I used uh, Nuln Oil here. Um, if I knew what kind of uh, demand this stuff was going to be in, I might have used my homemade wash instead because I'm running low on it. Um, but yeah, just wash the whole thing. Now I'll put a link above to my windmill build on how I did my stone look. Um, I'm painting this the same way. So this is all stone down here. A little bit of metal work there on the sides. And now the um, wash has dried, so I'm going back and I'm just highlighting 
um, some of the bronze work here just to make it shine a little bit when the telescope moves. And then to make these rivets pop a little bit more, a little bit more Nuln Oil is going around each one. And I'm putting a little bit around the rim of um, right there, as you can see, the telescope as well. Okay, so um, grab some uh, straws, cut them out to the length of the barbecue skewer, add some hot glue to that base and press it in place. Now you've got a working telescope. So I pre, um, I guess, tapped all these holes. I put all these barbecue skewers in, put the dome on, made sure it fit good, and pulled it off, added hot glue. Now I'm gonna put uh, this in place. Do the left, the right, and that little back piece. And then just to cover that seam up, we're gonna wrap it in again. This is probably like a little less than a quarter inch by quarter inch uh, strip of XPS foam. Now I made my own little jig to cut out um, cones on the Proxon. Um, but you can use the uh, circle cutter to cut these out as well by just offsetting the hot wire. And now these windows are from Shifting Lands as well. Cut out that little section on that. And I'm going to put one on all four sides of this cone. Then using the plans, you can measure out this uh, center uh, cylinder here. And I just took another little tiny strip of XPS and wrapped it around that, you know, just to make it uh, a little bit more interesting looking. And then here I am with the little hot um, super glue and again, some more rhinestones. These pieces of XPS were really small. Uh, I thought it was going to be an issue working with it here, um, but it really wasn't with the hot glue and allowed me to keep moving. And if you ever have an issue with like too much hot glue bubbling out, a cool metal tool like the clay sculpting tools that I use will suck it like right off of there really quick. Um, so it's a great little uh, secret, secret tip. Now to cover up all of the little tiny angular pieces on the dome, I'm just gonna cut out again a really small strip of XPS and as you can see here, I'm gonna use the metal uh, sculpting tool to remove the hot glue, just like that. The angle of all these braces, we're covering up all of those angle pieces on the dome, but I wanted to cover up the seam for that middle piece of the dome that we had cut out earlier. So it screwed up the design. No big deal, keep moving. The result, a cool little design on the back of the um, observatory with a window that I'm gonna place in there. So the main part of the dome here is bronze. The strips and the base I did uh, in copper. I painted white behind where the window was gonna be because I made stained glass windows to make it um, stand out and show a little bit more. And all I'm using is a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue to hold them in place. If you want to learn how I made these windows, I'll put a link above to how I make all my windows for my builds. And I went with green and blue here because green and blue are really good, kind of like complementary colors to copper and bronze. And this is just a light dry brush of that bronze, um, just on the top, um, just to make it look nice and shiny there. And here I'm taking a little mixture of patina uh, it's like a, a rust for copper or bronze. And as you can see, I did the dome already along all the joints. And now I'm doing all of these rivet areas. And you don't want to go too crazy with it. Um, I didn't want it to look too old. Now these cogs, um, I love these things. I don't even paint them up. I love the look, the antique bronze look. And I glued them in place. Now I'm just sticking a colored um, toothpick into each one. All right, now we're just on to the glass here. Um, base coat that white. It'll give you a nice, really good uh, blue color if you do that. Uh, and then I'm using a couple of different colors of blue. I think this is Azriel Blue by uh, Vallejo. Then I'm using kind of more muted blue. And I'm really just kind of mixing these together. I'm using a little bit of uh, retarder here to keep it um, uh, from drying on me. I'm just blending these colors together a little by little until I get a result that I like. Now for the reflection, I'm just doing a little bit of white 
on the top left and then here in just a second I'm going to do a smaller um, reflection on the bottom right. Now to sell this as an actual piece of glass, uh, some Vallejo gloss varnish over this, I did two coats, really makes it stand out, really you know draws the eye to this. Um, it stays shiny and it looks totally awesome, perfect finishing touch for the observatory. So one thing I want to just mention really quick, if you grab those plans, first thing you want to do is check the diameter of the cardboard tube you're going to use and make sure it's the same width as this opening right here. If it's a little bit smaller, no problem. If it's a little bit bigger, you just want to modify the plan and adjust the dome opening here right in the beginning. Right after that, you should be all set and good to go. So I want to thank everybody out there that has taken their time to watch my videos and leave comments down below. I think you all know I try and read every single one of those. I take them all to heart and I try to use that to grow as a person and as a content creator here to help improve my channel on YouTube. So thank you for that. I also want to thank a few other people. My brother Nathaniel, thank you for being there and really critiquing my videos, really giving it to me uh, straight. I appreciate that. My buddy Tim for helping me build this studio. If it wasn't for him, this whole studio, my whole basement, uh, would still be a mess. So thank you, Tim, very much. I appreciate all your help. And a couple other content creators, Luke at Geek Gaming, thank you. He's been there. I think he's one of my first uh, subscribers here on the channel. And he's helped me so much grow as a content creator. Thank you, Luke. As well as Gareth over at the DMG Info, thank you. We've had tons of conversations, all so helpful, and I appreciate it all so much. Thank you, thank you. So with that, head on over, check these shirts out. If they're not in the description below, give it a day or two. Um, the YouTube partnership uh, takes a, a few days for things to start loading up in there. And head on over to Patreon. Check that out. A couple cool tiers over there. And until next time, I'll see you around.